Well, you guys got another video here for you. What makes Linux better than Windows? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so Linux is often considered better than Windows from a lot of people's point of view who use Linux due to its open source nature. Also, which allows for greater customization compared to Windows. And we'll take a look at that in this video. Also, Linux has many different flavors. You can see here GNOME. We also have other versions like Plasma Desktop, and we also have other ones like Budgie. There's also XFCE, which you can use as well as a desktop environment. And we also have Mate or Mate, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But I just say Mate, but it is Mate, I think. But there you go. We have a desktop environment using that format and flavor. And we also have another one called LXDE, which is another form of desktop environment you can use. And we also have LXQT as well, which you can use. Again, another option available to you. And these are the versions once you choose your distro. For instance, if you choose Linux Mint, you'll have a bunch of different versions that you can use like Cinnamon, uh, Mate or Mate and XFCE. So you can choose those versions with, say, Linux Mint, and that will give you a different experience and a different desktop layout. Also, Fedora, the list goes on. You've got Fedora uh, KDE Plasma. You have Fedora XFCE. And we also have Fedora Cinnamon. And again, you might get the general idea now. There's different flavors for each distro. Uh, Mate or Mate, and we also have ones like Ubuntu, and these have different flavors to them as well, like Edubuntu. And you can generally get the idea now that there's quite a few to choose from, and this is only just a tip of the iceberg. You can see Kubuntu that you could use right here, and we also have other ones as well available, like Lubuntu. And this is just on the Ubuntu platform or distro that you can choose, Ubuntu Budgie. And these will obviously see the layouts are completely different. Ubuntu Cinnamon, again, a different layout to the previous one. And this is just Mint and Ubuntu. We have many different distros to choose from, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get the general idea. Now, before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Cells. If you're looking for cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description and use my promo code capital B, capital R, 09 and apply that to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD Key Cells. Once you submit your order, they will then send you your key and you can then activate your version of Windows just like you see on the screen. Okay, so let's first talk about Windows. What do they have to offer? Well, we have two flavors. We have Windows 10 and Windows 11. We have all of this bloat inside Windows 11, which is something that people really don't want. We've got Copilot embedded everywhere. We have widgets popping out all over the screen. We also have other things like Edge that also has a load of bloat in it and adverts. And we also have a Copilot uh, bloated in here normally the home screen page has loads of adverts on it which is embedded into uh, edge itself it's not uninstallable and there's also loads of things that you have to turn off customization in windows 11 is a must because of the telemetry that is embedded into microsoft windows so this is windows 11 you would have to come inside here and go into the privacy and security and you would have to jump through a bunch of hoops and turn off a ton of stuff that you don't really need. Same thing goes for uh, Windows updates. These are not very easily controlled. You would have to either have the pro version to go into group policy and take full control of the Windows updates. You can pause updates for a certain period, but then they will resume. They automatically install in the background and they would automatically restart the PC. And there's loads of other things that you can't do with the Windows Update section. You have to either go into the registry or you have to use some form of group policy to take full control of the Windows updates where they are forcing feature updates on people, which is obviously breaking people's computers. And this is a common problem with Windows right now. Uh, Windows 11 has become 
you know, probably one of the hatiest operating systems right now. Also, Microsoft are forcing people to have a, a you know Microsoft account, and you can see if you don't have a Microsoft account, you can't use some of the features. Local account is not set up by default. You have to use a lot of bypass methods to be able to get a local account set up at the very beginning, whereas by default, Linux will have a local account straight out the gate. So there's a lot of differences between Windows and Linux, and we'll go through some of the stuff in a second on Linux. But again, like I said, this is a big turnoff for a lot of people with Windows. So also installed applications comes with a heap of bloat on here that people don't need or use. And this is a common problem. You can get light versions of Linux. Again, you can buy a lighter version of Windows, but it's not so easy to get hold of the license keys for those. And a lot of people turn to piracy to get those keys. Group policy is a must. So you'd have to have the Windows 11 Pro or Windows 10 Pro versions to turn off a bunch of stuff that you don't want. And if you've got a home version of Windows, you would have to then go into the registry and make a bunch of tweaks in there to take full control or take some sort of control of Windows because it is a closed operating system and Microsoft don't share the code and things like that, whereas Linux is open source. Also, by default, Linux has a lot easier to control updates that you want to install, and it's not automatically updated by default. It gives you full control of what you want to do. So, for instance, if you're on home versions of Windows, you would have to jump into the registry. And again, this can be a scary place because you can break your system, and you would have to go in here and add a bunch of registry edits to here to take control of Windows updates, to block feature updates if you want to block them, or you can use third party applications, which then obviously adds more risk because you don't know who the creator of these programs are or these scripts are. And this is what has become pretty common for Windows. You would have to go through and use scripts to turn off a lot of stuff because it takes a long time to go through and turn a lot of this stuff off. By default, the personalization section, you will need to activate Windows to be able to control uh, some of this. Linux has a lot more customization to it than what Windows does, and this is just a fact. But you can see here, if you're not activated, you're not going to be able to make certain changes like themes, dark mode, and stuff like that. Yes, there's workarounds uh, to it, but again, I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'm just showing you some of the facts of what makes uh, Linux different to Windows. So let's pop over to Linux and take a look. So Linux has enhanced security, better resource efficiency than Windows, and it also has a wider range of control over the system operations compared to Windows. Uh, some of these are, say, for instance, Windows updates, which we touched on just recently on the Windows side. So let's take a look here. So you can see by default, we have 21 updates available to us. They're not being installed on the system without my say-so. Uh, these are turned off by default, and you would have to physically click on the install updates. You can change this to automatic if you wish, but it just gives you a bit more control compared to, say, Windows. And this is where Linux is different to Windows. You're going to have much more customization and control over the operating system. There is no telemetry and bloat embedded into Linux, unlike Windows. Yes, Ubuntu does have some form of telemetry and maybe Mint might be going that way, but there is an opt-out option which you can opt out. It's pretty straightforward. But again, we're not going to get too deeply into it because we do know there's a major difference between Windows and also uh, Linux. You can also see here, we can take full control of our updates and notifications and things like that here, whereas on Windows, you just have no option. You can even block updates right at the desktop here on every version here. So if I don't want some sort of, say, feature update uh, coming down on, say, uh, Linux here, I can quickly put that in here and say, I'm not interested in this right now. And you can hold off. Whereas on Windows, you have to go through and do a bunch of, uh, you know, registry tweaks or a bunch of uh, group policies to actually change it or even download applications to stop it. Also, Linux is using a local account and it's not making you attach yourself to, say, the Microsoft uh, servers 
and where they can harvest all your information and data. So that's one big major difference, and that is a major difference compared to Windows. You can see down here you get notifications about your updates, and you can control them a lot easier. Also, out of the box, Linux is 100% free. Well, pretty much all of the versions are free. There's probably a few paid options out there. But again, this is mainly all free. So you could just download and install these on the system. When it comes to software management, you can download your software inside here. Now, this is where things change a little bit and sort of sway over to Windows's favor, in my personal opinion. Remember, all these opinions are my own. You can leave your comments down in the comment section, but I do think you have a wider range and much better software on Windows compared to Linux. Also, there's other things like gaming, which we've already talked about. I don't want to sort of dwell on that too much and hammer it home because I think everyone knows that if you're a hardcore gamer, it's just not quite there yet. And this is not all Linux's fault. You know, companies like Adobe are just not willing to support, uh, you know, say Linux. And also gaming companies are just not offering options for Linux users. And also software companies like NVIDIA are a little bit behind on the support for Linux side of things. So there's other reasons for it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't use Linux because Linux has plenty of options available for people that have really old hardware, which doesn't give them a upgrade path to, say, Windows 11 because of the unsupported hardware uh, issue. Now, you can use bypass methods, but again, it's risky in the long run. Probably Microsoft will close that door eventually, and it's going to leave you in limbo. So I would suggest if that is the case, then maybe consider jumping over to Linux if you use, say, YouTube and you do a bit of emails and you do a bit of light gaming, then Linux might be an option for you and you may be able to work your way around Linux because it's not that difficult once you get it installed. There's plenty to choose from. There's more flavors compared to, say, Windows, where you only got Windows 10 and Windows 11. I've already gone through how many different flavors and that was just scratching the surface. There is literally tons. They're fully customizable compared to Windows. You have more customization in Linux than you do in Windows, and that is a fact. So some of the downfall sides for Linux is going to be the learning curve. You are basically going from a Windows operating system to Linux. And if you've not uh, had any training or any sort of experience with Linux, you should start doing it now, maybe in a virtual machine or buy yourself an old computer. If you've got an old computer, maybe dual boot it or even install it on a system and start to practice with it because if you've got no other option and you can't afford a new computer then maybe uh, you know using something like Linux might be a lifeline for you to give that old computer a new lease of life and be able to use it still for a, a few more years so also software compatibility that can be an issue for some people i can't use linux on a full time basis because the software i use it just doesn't support Linux. And unfortunately, that's just for me. And that doesn't mean I'm bashing Linux in any way, shape or form, because some of it is not Linux's fault. But like I said, it just doesn't work for me on a full time basis because some of the software I use uh, doesn't work with Linux. And also the other side of it is if, like I said, if you're an all time gamer that is like playing lots of hardcore. A so what makes Linux better than Windows? Well, it doesn't. It just comes down to the user. If you're one of those people that have made the transition over to Linux and it's working for you, good for you, because that's exactly what you wanted. And unfortunately, not everyone is going to be happy with the transition over to Linux because it just might not work out for them. Maybe there's some particular type of software that they need to use and Linux doesn't support it. Or maybe it's a game they like to play and Linux just doesn't support it. There's many different reasons. So it's not the perfect solution for everyone, but it's an option for a lot of people that can use Linux for, say, your general use. And it might be an option for you. So don't turn your nose up at it because there is options out there which might suit you. There's plenty of options. If you need any questions answered, then always join our Discord server or leave a question down in the comment section 
Some of the Linux users that are sensible might be able to answer those questions for you. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. So my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to make a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.